Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. Uh, good to see you guys here. Welcome to those online as well. Uh, we're going to start things off with a song. The first one is a uh, Need to Breathe song. It's called Brother. We will have the lyrics up on the screen and invite you to please sing along with us for all the songs. Folks, I needed that this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good to be together on this Labor Day weekend. And thanks for your presence online and in person uh, as we're prayerful for those who are about traveling probably this uh, last break before uh, lots of routine kicks in. Uh, thanks for the great turnout last Sunday. Uh, God's Work Our Hands Sunday. We had seven or eight I, uh, different projects going on during the 10 o'clock hour, uh, resulting in hundreds of people being served, uh, both within and beyond our community, including uh, our, many of our neighbors dealing with food insecurity. We have another God's Work Our Hands Sunday scheduled for the last Sunday of November, so be aware of that and look for that coming up. 
Uh, we welcome back Pastor Michael. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Pastor Michael Dixon, who is helping lead worship this morning. Hey, Michael. And um, there is no faith formation during the 10 o'clock hour this morning, but we invite you to grab some coffee and enjoy some conversation in the community center, please, after worship, if you'd like to, and have conversation with Pastor Michael there. Uh, please introduce yourselves to him if you haven't already done so. Uh, next Sunday, of course, we kick off a new season of faith formation for all ages. Uh, lots of publicity out about that, both in last week's E! News and last week's or a couple of days ago, the, uh, uh, the First Lance newsletter and this coming week's uh, E! News as well. Please be aware of all that, and uh, that's during the 10 o'clock hour, of course. Next Sunday at 10 a.m., we will gather right at 10 a.m. in this space, okay? Right at 10 a.m. in this space for a congregational meeting to vote on calling Pastor Michael to serve among us. Uh, please make sure you've seen all the information that's been in the e-news, uh, especially this past Thursday. We had a new document of some frequently asked questions that we'd like you to look at uh, about the call details and process and things like that. We just want everyone to have all their questions answered before next Sunday's meeting so that we can have the vote and then kick off our faith formation for all ages immediately after we vote. So uh, right at 10 a.m., uh, those of you who are here to worship, please stay for a few moments and we'll conduct the vote and then uh, we'll head on out to our classrooms. Thanks. And if you haven't already made a gift uh, to help Hurricane Idalia, I think you pronounced that correctly, Hurricane Idalia or Maui wildfire relief efforts. Uh, one good place to do that, not the only, but one good place to do that is the ELCA disaster response. Uh, it's always a good way to make those gifts and donations and make sure that most of that money goes right to the people who need it. So you can go to ELCA.org, ELCA.org and click on one or both of those banners that are right, on, right there on the home page of the website to direct relief where it is needed most, including the Maui wildfires and uh, Hurricane Adalia relief. So it's good to be together. Uh, Labor Day weekend, I've got a centering moment that has to do with labor and work. Uh, I've actually used this before, but it was pre-COVID, so you know, anything's fair game now, right? Uh, I have learned that real angels don't have gossamer white robes and cherubic skin. They have calloused hands and the smell of the day's sweat. Think about that. Who are the angels in your life that do work every day? Uh, hard work in our world that we don't acknowledge but we take for granted. Uh, we're going to take a moment in our sermon or message later on today to kind of call to mind some people who do work every day, often unnoticed, unthanked, even not even that we've ever even had conversation or been face to face, but there's so many people who do work that impact our lives uh, that we benefit from. And they are uh, the hand and body and, and heart of God in our lives for which we can be thankful. So let's give that some attention as we go about this weekend. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, indeed it's good to get, be together and do your work this morning, your work of worship that always, always uh, has impact beyond what we might imagine. So we commend this time to you and this work to you as we gather together, each of us giving what we're able this morning for the good of the gathered community. And we pray, O oh God, that as we do that, we become more mindful and more appreciative of all the people in our lives who do work, often that we never see and certainly may never acknowledge, but that make a big difference in our lives. May we continue, O oh God, to find ways to express our appreciation. Lord, we give this worship to you and ask that together with each other and with you, we make the most of it as we continue to strive to follow Jesus. In his love, for his life, and in his name we pray. Amen. Let's join together in our next song, shall we? Let's stand for this one. Uh, we're going to sing Thrive.
buried by the water We never will run dry Once again, welcome to worship. Good to be together. Take a moment, please, to speak to each other. Wish each other a good morning and welcome each other to worship. Let me invite children to come up and join me for a minute. Come on up, join me. 
Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Any others want to come on up? Come on up. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? Thanks. Good to see you. So, uh, Labor Day weekend. You know what? You know why we celebrate Labor Day weekend? Tomorrow, no, uh, we most of us, a lot of us don't go to school. A lot of us don't do work. Uh, offices closed, by the way. I forgot to mention that in the announcements, but anyway. Um, so, what's Labor Day weekend about? Do you know? Do you have any idea? How about um, in that word labor? What do we think about? We think about work and the work people do. Do you know some people to work? Let me ask you this: What do you want to? You get asked this a lot, probably. What do you want to do when you grow up? What What do you want to be when you grow up? Have you thought about that? You ever thought about what you might do? Uh, uh, you think about what mom and dad do, what your family does, and things like that. Well, I've got some very common objects this morning that I want to show you, and I want you to think about how I got them, where they come from, all right? Uh, so, first thing I'll show you is this bag of, don't get too excited, dried apricots. How's that sound? <laughs> A little snack I have every now and then says dried Mediterranean apricots. Now, did I grow these in my yard? Did I grow these in my yard? Probably not, no. Where, do you, where did I get them? It's not a trick question, where did I get them? Think I got them from the store? Yeah, yeah, I got them from the store. And, and uh, interestingly enough, these are grown in, they come from Turkey, the country of Turkey. You can look that up online if you want to, if you've never done that before, but these come from the country of Turkey and their Mediterranean apricots. But here's the thing, there's a whole lot of people that had to work in order for me to enjoy this bag of apricots. There's people who grew them, there's people who picked them, there's people who packed them, cleaned them, and shipped them. There's people who, oh, took the seeds out of them. Uh, there's people who uh, also sent them to the United States from a country way far away. And there's people who then put them on shelves and stocked the shelves at a grocery store so that I could go by and buy them. So think about all the people involved in one little apricot, or apricot, some people say, apricot, apricot. Here's something else. Got a book. I got this book. Actually, a friend sent it to me. So that's where I got it, but where did they get it? They bought it. Bookstore, yeah, get it at a bookstore, or you can buy it online and have it delivered. Um, now, think of all the people that are involved in this book. One person sat at a computer, most likely, and typed out all the words in this book, all right? Somebody wrote that. Then there were people who were editors who checked the grammar and make sure all the punctuation is correct. And then there are people who put it in the form of a book and put the cover on it and then uh, people who box it up and ship it and send it to those bookstores where we buy it from either at a store or online. So the point being what? Everything we touch and have that we didn't make and grow and do ourselves, whether it's food or clothing or our parts of our houses and everything we use Everything touches a lot of hands that are people taking care of us and God working in our lives through a lot of different people. So what I'd like you to do this week is think about, while you're together with your family, maybe at mealtime or something like that, think about things in your house, in your life, that make a difference, like your shoes, like the food you eat, like the roof over your head, the house we have, and think of all the people who did work so that you could have those things. And then think about what's the best way we can appreciate them. One of them, one of the ways is to pray, and maybe there's some other ways you can think of to thank people who do that sort of work that make our lives better. And one day, you'll be in the place to work and make lives better for others, but every day, you can find work to do that's helpful. Maybe what mom or dad ask you to do around the house, maybe help a friend, uh, who needs help, those kinds of things. Find ways to be helpful. Jesus in our Bible story says, what I want you to do is think about how 
you can be helpful with the work we do. Let's pray. God, thank you for people who work. Thank you for work to do. And thank you for people who do their work that benefit us that we may never see. Help us, O oh God, to be appreciative, be thankful, to pray for them, and to also find ways to acknowledge it too. We love you, God, and we thank you. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. I appreciate your time. Enjoy your apricots. Today comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 26. From that point on, Jesus began to tell his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem where he would suffer greatly at the hands of the leaders, resulting in his being killed, and then be raised in three days. When Peter first heard this, he took Jesus aside and said angrily, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter, shouting, Get behind me, Satan. You're thinking as a barrier to my work. Instead of dwelling on your own priorities, set your heart and mind to God's agenda. Jesus turned to them all. If anyone wants to follow me, put your personal egos and your selfish priorities aside. Then take up your cross and live my way. Those who try to save their self-centered way of life will lose it, while those who lose their life for my sake will discover life like never before. Tell me, what will it be worth if you acquire the whole world but forfeit your life? Think about it. What is your life really worth? Will you let me show you? Thank you, Christina. <clears throat> so the great inventor, uh, Thomas Edison, once said, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like hard work. This Labor Day weekend, as I mentioned, is a good time to recognize hard workers and hard work. Those people who impact our lives when they do that work and maybe even appreciate some of them along the way. When I was a seminary student, I worked part-time for the maintenance staff on the seminary campus. Uh, every time someone moved out of an apartment or a dorm room or a house on campus, we would go in and paint the interior completely. Uh, it was easy because it was all white, you know, there were no, no colors involved, but there was trim paint as well as wall paint that we were trying to use. We did a lot of painting during the summer months, and I worked two summers uh, there, and I learned a lot about painting more than I ever needed to know, including how to get oil-based paint out of your eye when you drip paint in it, right? Not a pleasant experience, let me assure you. Uh, but uh, as we did all that painting and I learned about painting, probably the most important thing I learned uh, those summers with all that painting to do was that I didn't want to be a painter for a living, right? How many of you have ever attempted to paint your own house, either inside or outside? You've done some of that? Yeah. Uh, when Cindy and Katie Bess and I moved to Greensboro years ago and bought our house, Cindy and I decided that hallway was dingy, but that hallway was such an easy project, we could easily paint it ourselves. Uh, it was truly a miracle that we were still married when we finished. <laughs> But the biggest thing, the biggest thing it did for us was make us really appreciate professional painters more than we ever thought we would. Uh, for the last two weeks, we've had a hardworking crew of two men painting the outside of our house. And I can't tell you, as I hearken back on those memories of my painting days, uh, how many times I've stopped and said thank you for what you're doing to those two men who are doing their work uh, and how much I appreciate their work. I never realized that my house could actually look that good because it's been a long time since uh, it's had a really good paint job. And uh, I can't stop thinking about how much I appreciate what they're doing. It's been really hot most of the days in these last couple of weeks, 
but they're there pressure washing and sanding and scraping and replacing some rotten wood and making it all shine with brand new paint. Uh, they're adding value to my home and they are uh, also making it last longer, which I appreciate. And I think about that every time I look out the window and see them working or get in the car to go somewhere or come home uh, and, and see them, I'm incredibly grateful. How often do we take just a few moments to recognize the beauty and the value of hard work in our world and the workers who pull it off? How often do we appreciate all the people who impact our lives every day with their work and they're making our lives better? In our reading from Matthew's gospel story, Jesus has a very pointed discussion with Peter. That's nothing new, really. We understand that. We've heard that before. But Jesus tells the disciples that part of his work for God involves going to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, of course, confronting the religious leaders, the power brokers, and the, and the uh, civil authorities who live there and who work there. And Jesus is clear about what that means, that he's likely to be killed for it. Uh, Peter objects vehemently about this part of Jesus' work, or even considering this to be something Jesus' work should include and be called to do. And Peter's motivation for his objection is clear by the response Jesus gives him. Uh, Jesus confronting the authorities and Jesus taking the risk of getting killed is not in Peter's best interest at all. Peter realizes that, and that's from which he speaks. Peter objects, and Jesus actually lays into Peter and calls him Satan, my adversary, and tries to set Peter straight. And the bottom line is this. He's saying, Peter, my life is about serving God's agenda about fulfilling God's dream for the world. It's not about me. And then he says to him, I need you to figure that out as well. If we're able to do that, there's a lot of things that happen. That we can easily drift into this mindset of it all revolves around me. I'm the center of the universe and I worship the Holy Trinity of me, myself, and I, right? It's easy. Our culture even encourages that in this place and time we live. But when we're able to see our life as an expression of God's agenda, lots of things happen. Jesus is able to say there's something more important than hanging on to my life even. And I doubt that many of us will ever get to that point some people we know in our lives have done that. Maybe some of us have done that. But it's hard to get to that point of where Jesus was, that he was willing to let everything go, including his own life, in, either to, in order to serve the purpose of God. But when we do that, when we see our life as an extension of God's dream for the world and God's agenda for the world, uh, then our work and everyone else's work can take on new meaning and new purpose. Uh, as I've said in the announcements, and thank you for all who participa participated, we just finished God's Work Our Hands Day last Sunday. It was the 10th annual day in our ELCA, the national denomination. And uh, it, it also was one of those Sundays where, where our, our national church is doing it next Sunday, but we're doing faith formation kickoff plus a, plus a uh, congregational meeting. So uh, we, we did it two weeks early. But... Um, while we were doing that, did we think about the lives being impacted? I hope so. You know, did you even say a prayer for some of those people? We're packing snack bags for school kids. Uh, we're making ch chicken tetrazzini casseroles for our local homeless neighbors. We're weeding in Charlie's garden so the produce that we get, and this year, by the way, all-time record of produce from our community garden uh, has already been surpassed, and there's plenty more growing uh, in this current season. Uh, and, and then putting together shelves for music for other people to enjoy and worship and sending care notes to homebound sisters and brothers in Christ 
did we think about the amazing impact that God is doing through our simple gestures of kindness and caring? And how often do we do that every day? Whether we're working for pay or volunteering or helping someone who needs help or just working around the house, do we realize that that's a way God is at work through us to make the world better and that that's why we're here? That's why we're here, to be God's hands and hearts and bodies of love in action. Arthur, author and journalist uh, and playwright Don Marquis once said, when someone tells you that they got rich through hard work, always ask them, whose hard work was it? Think about that. If someone tells you they got rich through hard work, ask them, whose hard work was it? And we know what he's saying, don't we? Through work, we are connected, all of us in the great web of humanity. And there's not a one of us who is here or has what we has or does what we does without the work of countless others in our lives. No matter how much we've accomplished, no matter how hard we've worked, there are people behind us and have been for years that make it possible because of their hard work. I'm indebted indebted to others constantly whose work has made my life and my well-being possible. One point Jesus makes in our story today is this. It's so easy to put ourselves at the center of life as we know it and think that's all that matters. To God and to me, for that matter, that I'm the center. I'm it. I'm what matters and my perspective is all I see. But when we put God at the center, as Jesus is encouraging Peter and his followers to do, we see others as God's blessings in our life, past, present, and future as well. And not only do we see God's blessings to us through other people, we also begin to see ourselves as God's blessing to the world. Uh, Jesus gave his life away for God's agenda, And taking the time to recognize that, to acknowledge that, to appreciate what he did, we see life and work differently. We see what it's all about. We are blessed to be a blessing, as we've said from time to time. So I want you to just do me a favor right now, here for a moment. Take a moment right now to think about a person or two whose work makes your life better that you don't even really interact with, maybe you've never met, maybe you've never said a thing to them or don't even know who they are, but you know what they do. Someone who you usually don't or don't, haven't at all interacted with, someone who's working most every day to make your life better. Take a moment. Think about that just for a moment. And now think about this. Think about this. Is there some way you could maybe creatively or just simply uh, express appreciation for them and to them? Is there some way to let them know how much you value what they do for you and how they impact lives and the world around them? Uh, Educator and suffragist Margaret Cousins once noted this, appreciation can change a day and even change a life. Your willingness to put it into words or into action is all that is necessary. Think about it. Appreciation of things and people and work we take for granted can change a day and change a life. It just takes us putting it into action. This Labor Day weekend, let's take stock for all the ways in which God's hands are working in our lives to benefit us, embodying God's care for us. And let's give thanks. Let's be grateful as we realize that taking up a cross, that is giving our life for the sake of others, offering our life and our value for the sake of others is the greatest work we can do for God. Like so many others have done for us, 
and like Jesus did for you, for me, and for the world. Amen. Please join us in singing by your side. Turn away. And why are you looking for love? Why are you still searching as if I'm not enough? To where will you go, child? Tell me where will you run? To where will you? I'll be by your side wherever you fall in the dead of night Whenever you call and please don't fight these hands that are holding you Yeah, my hands are holding you Look at these hands at my side join our hearts and minds together as we continue that prayerful thought of appreciation for God's love in our lives in so many ways. Let us pray together. O oh God, our creator, who parents the universe with love, we thank you for all the beautiful hearts, minds, and bodies who work every day for our benefit without our recognition or appreciation. Through them, you care for us, you protect us, 
You teach us, feed, shelter, and clothe us. And so often we take it all for granted, barely noticing their hard work, their dedication, or their courage. We humbly thank you, Lord. Help us to live with gratitude and find ways to express appreciation. Lord of the journey, show us the way. It's a challenge, Lord, to set aside our personal preferences and wants, and instead to give our full attention to your dream for the world, to make your agenda our own. That's exactly what it means to be a disciple. May we let ourselves be inspired every day by your self-giving way of living for others. May we strive to see our lives as your work of art, Lord, as you paint a picture of helpfulness and blessing for those who are suffering, for all those who need your care. Lord of the journey. Show us the way. We, oh, I'm sorry. We offer ourselves in solidarity with those facing hurricane devastation and recovery. We know that natural disasters are always harder on the poor. We're thankful for aid and relief work through FEMA, the Red Cross, Lutheran Disaster Response, and so many others. Show us how we can help and let your generosity flow to where it's needed most. As we pray for all our siblings, sisters, and brothers recovering in Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Lord of the journey. Show us the way. Gracious God, we are indeed mindful of those who have asked for our prayers this day, those we hold in our hearts and express love and companionship with who need your healing touch, your moment of comfort and grace. Uh, we lift up to you giving thanks for loved ones who have recently died, and we pray for Doyle Harper and his family. May they know your care and your promises. May they find comfort in their grieving through those who surround them. We lift up others who have asked for prayers, those whose names are known to us. And so we pray for Megan, Jane, Sarah, Rachel, Dave, Gordon, Anne, Dawn, Linda, Darren, Martha, Tim, Casey, Douglas, and Joanne. There are other people on our hearts and minds this day we are praying for, so we take a moment now to lift them before you, O oh God, to hold them in your heart and ours as we name them right now silently or out loud. Lord of the journey, show, show us, us the way. way. Lord, we give thanks for and pledge our support to teachers, administrators, and staff of schools on every level as a new academic year begins. We pray that you would empower local and state leaders of all kinds, including us, to bring together all the resources and creative power needed to make our schools places of safety, of nurture, and of learning for every child in their care. Thank you, God, for the courage and wisdom of teachers in our midst. Our Father, our Father, who art in
Let every word and action be done as if we are doing it for Jesus. Thanking Thank God, God, the Creator, every, every step, step of the way. way. Do your very best to work from the heart. Knowing, Knowing ultimately, ultimately all our work is a work of God. Go in the peace of God, whose work of love created you. We go, empowered by the Spirit of God, to honor all whose work of love changes us. And dwell on the love of Christ, whose work for God included giving his life away for us and for the world. We go, led by the Spirit of Christ, to thank all whose loving work impacts our lives. Amen. Join us in singing, I Refuse. your work and your work back there to help us all be inspired and enjoy worship every week. So thanks for the work you do. Just uh, real quickly, Michael's going to just kind of linger in here for a few moments if you want to come speak with him, and then he'll migrate over to the coffee area in the community center. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to speak with him, please do. Go with Christ and go as Christ to love and serve God's world. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Good morning. Great to see you, Jill. Doing all right.